Hello team, today I want to show you how to set up writing up your advanced higher physics project. This video might also be useful for other sciences, please pass it on. Before starting out, make sure that you've downloaded the advanced higher project course assessment task, CAT, which is the full marking instructions. Find it online and make sure that it's the most up to date version. I suggest you read it well in advance of starting your project. Let's get going. So if we look in the CAT document, the course assessment task document, there's a detailed marking instruction. And we're going to be using that to set up our report. So we're going to open a Word document. I've done mine and I've given it a name. And the first thing we want to do is we want to include informative title. So what the best thing to do then is to insert a cover page. So insert cover page. And you're going to call it it's something informative. So your, your title of your project, I'm going to call them my physics project, but you need to give it the title of your experiment. A good thing to put here, your subtitle would be your name and possibly your candidate number. OK, so we're then going to go to page two. And if you look in the marking instructions, it tells you that we need a contents page. So this is under the reference section and a table of contents. You can choose the one you want. I think this is just plenty. Now, it's nothing in it because we haven't written anything yet, but I'll show you how that's going to populate. Next stage that I'm doing is I'm going to do the abstract. Now, I've set this up and I've chosen a design and you've got plenty to select. Again, we don't want something fancy. We do want something that's readable. If you notice, I'm going to be using heading one for anything that's important or a starting point and then heading two for the second level and that will help us with our content page. It clearly says in the instructions that you need an abstract that this needs to go before or after the contents page and it tells you what that should be encoded. So we're putting that under heading one. The next topic that we want is our underlying physics. Again, this needs to be under the heading one. Underlying physics can be spread throughout the report, but you might want some introduction. The next thing we can do is we're ready to start our three experiments. You might not have three, but three is the standard. Give it a title of your experiment, should be clear. So if you're measuring G, it might be the simple pendulum. Then we're going to go back to this document and we're going to find out what needs to be involved. A good thing to be putting in there is possibly to highlight this and put these in the sections. Just to remind you, you'll be removing these. I'm going to just put those in there. And then we want our procedures section. And procedures might have diagrams, descriptions, so let's put that in. So we're going to call the next heading our procedures. Again, this would be a heading two because that comes under experiment one. So we've got procedures. You might have your diagrams. It might have your methods. Results section, uncertainties and conclusion. Now, all of these should be, I would say, heading two because that's going to generate a contents page. We then need a conclusion and an evaluation. And what I didn't say is that you probably want to aim for for that experiment as well and that would go at the beginning that's our aim so we've got roughly what's going to be in each section under each title for each experiment but we can expand on that as well from this part here so going backwards your evaluation it says should include these now a good thing to do would be to copy that i'm going to put that under the evaluation we're going to be crossing this out but it just tells you and gives you hints to what you should write. Then going back to the procedures, you can see that your procedures should include uh, a clear description of how the apparatus was used to obtain the readings. You should have labeled diagrams and descriptions. Again, if you go to the detailed marking instructions, you might want to paste those in it tells you what you would get your mark for and what you wouldn't. I've realised I put method, it just felt wrong. You can put that under your correct section. So now we've got that, we're going to probably do three experiments. So we can copy that whole section and then we can paste it for experiment two and experiment three. So if we go up to our table of contents, you can see that there was nothing in it, but now we've got some headings so we can now update our table of contents. So you can see that that's given us 
the three experiments and it's given us our second level, which is the information that we're going to be using. A couple of other sections we need to think about. We need to be looking at your references and an overall conclusion. So we can add that in to the end. One thing that's really useful is if you click on control and click, this will take you to the correct section as well. So that's useful when you're wanting to move about and set it up. So we're going to have here as heading one, we're going to have an overall evaluation. That should be in your overall evaluation. And really importantly, and I'm going to do another video separately, is your references. But that should be at the end. Again, as heading one, that's going to be your reference section. Be aware that if you get this button here, it's going to make everything disappear because it just shortens it. Um, so if suddenly all your material disappears, just check you haven't done that. And we can go back to our home page and our table of contents and we can update that. Now, if I update the table, it doesn't give me those last two sections because I've not doing the entire table. So I always recommend update the entire table and you get those two last sections. Now, what we haven't got is we haven't got the page numbers. And if you look at the presentation part, you need an appropriate structure. I think we've laid that down. We've got an informative title. So my advanced higher physics project doesn't count. Uh, we've got a contents page, but we haven't numbered the pages. So this is something we're going to do next. So we're going to start adding a header and footer. So I should probably go to this section here. So we want to insert a header and footer. So in the header, you can choose something posh, but this one's really nice and simple. And just put your name in the middle. Your school is quite helpful here. And in this box here, I suggest you write the candidate number. Then we're going to go to the footer. This is where we're going to put the page numbers. So if we go to the footer, we just want the page numbers. Let's just go to the footer at the start and we're going to add the page numbers. So insert the page numbers at the bottom of the page. And from experience, I really recommend that, although some of these are very nice, that the best one to choose is not just the page number, but how many pages should be in your project in total. Um, and that really helps the marker in case he drops all the or she drops all the pages. So if you then put that in page two of eight, then the marker is looking out for eight pages. Again, we don't need it that long. So that might have changed our contents. So again, at the end of each section, you don't need to do that really until the very end, but don't forget to do that. So I think in this video, we're just about finished looking at your table of demands for the summary. Have we got an abstract? We haven't written it yet, but it's there, ready to go. We've got some underlying physics. We've got a place to put your labels and diagrams and descriptions. We've got a place for your tape built and results got an evaluation and we've got an overall evaluation and the only thing we need to look into is your references and I'll do another little video about how to show your data. So I hope that helps. Uh, I wish you all the best in your advanced hire write-up. Thank you.